In this tutorial, we're going to explore how to get the soap dish project started in CAD. Now, you have three concepts that you've flushed out. You have dimensions, you have thought about what you want to make, you've got detail, you've got it meets all the specifications, and you've picked one of those designs that you want to make. And now we're going to develop it on the CAD system. So the first thing we have to do is look at our project folder. I've made a project folder called Soap Dish, but you'll notice here that it's not selected. What you're going to do is you're going to come down to new. You're going to do a new single project user. Sorry, new new single user project. And you're going to type in here soap dish, finish. And it's going to put the check mark by the word soap dish. That is very, very important because your soap dish needs to be in the soap dish project folder. Once you do that, you're going to make a new standard IPT. We're working in the English system. We're working in inches. Standard IPT is the part file. Go ahead and create that, and we'll have a new part file to make our soap dish. Now, the soap dish is, uh, the specifications for the soap dish are that it needs to be 5.5 inches uh, long, 4.5 inches wide, and 1 inch deep. Now, the 5.5 by 4.5 is not an absolute requirement that it be exactly that. Those are the maximum dimensions. It must be 1 inch deep, however. So, we're going to start off by making a rectangle, and we're going to make that rectangle, and we're going to dimension it so that it is five and a half by four and a half. So I'll get these dimensions in here: five and a half by four and a half, and that will be the maximum size of our soap dish. So whatever we make has to fit inside the soap dish. I'm also going to draw the soap dish cavity where the actual soap will sit. That's also a rectangle. I'm going to draw it inside here, inside this box. And its dimensions are 2.5 by 1.5. So 2.5 would be the length of the soap dish, uh, the, the soap receptacle, and 1.5. And that has to be exact. Okay, that is the exact size of the receptacle. That's the size, that's what we're going to be using right there. Okay? Now, because I've dimensioned to this, uh, the length and the width, and I made it a rectangle, I can grab the edge of it and just move it around. So I'm going to move this. I need to press escape to get out of the dimension uh, command, and I can grab this edge and move it around. I'm going to move it out over here for now because I don't want it necessarily in the workspace where I'm going to draw my soap dish. Okay, I'm choosing to make a golf green. It's not a very good project. Please do not copy it. It's, it's, it doesn't have enough detail. It's too simple. You're going to make something much more complicated, much more interesting than, than a golf green. But for the purposes of demonstration, it's quick. It shows you the, the process, uh, and that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to, that's what I'm going to be doing. You're going to be doing something a little bit more intricate. So in order to make this golf green, I'm going to use a spline tool, and I'm going to do an interpolation spline, and I'm just going to draw the shape of what I think a golf green would look like. Now I've got a shape on my I've got a shape on my uh, on my sketch. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to simulate that as much as I can. And I want to stay within the lines here. I don't want to go past the line. You see the line, this line is my five and a half by four and a half. So I can see that I'm pretty close here. This has the shape of a golf of a golf green. I can totally see that. And I want to bring in my, I want to bring in my soap dish, and I want to think about where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it now. You don't want to put it too close to the edge because we're going to be doing something called a shell, and a shell is going to come up and hollow out the inside part of the soap dish. And if I have this too close, I'm not going to have enough room for the shell to get in there. So I need to make sure that I have at least, I'd say, you're going to have to have a quarter of an inch gap at least. One of these squares here, the large squares, is an inch. One little one's an eighth of an inch. So don't get any closer to the edge than a quarter inch, which would be two of those squares. Okay, so I'm going to put my, my soap cavity right there. And basically, I have finished my sketch, except I'm going to go ahead and trim off the outside edge of this. I don't need it. I don't need these lines. And I'm going to make sure I trim the inside line here. I don't need these lines anymore. And it may make me get rid of the dimension. Because sometimes it does that. Okay, do you see what it did? It, it moved my... All right, it's messing up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back. 
I'm going to use the back button, and I'm going to delete these dimensions. These dimensions, when the, when the line is dimensioned, sometimes, well, every time, it, it when you start trimming things off, it keeps that dimension there, and that could have an effect on the part. So I'm going to delete the dimension, and that way I can change the lengths of the lines or get rid of them freely. I can also just click on the line and delete it without trimming it. So there we go. So now I've got my my soap dish, my the shape of my golf green. I've got my rectangular soap cavity that's exactly dimensioned 2.5 by 1.5. And I'm going to finish my sketch now. And I'm going to rotate my part because this is the top. This surface right here is the top of my soap dish. So I want to make sure that when I do my extrusion, I'm going down. Now, we're going to extrude this, and we're going to extrude. You'll notice now because I have multiple areas that I could extrude, it's allowing me to select either this or this, not both. If I want both of them to extrude, which I do, I need to select them both. Now, I've selected the first one, and I'm going to come in here, and, it's, and there's the second one. Is this the correct way, is this the correct direction for my extrusion? No, because the surface that I drew on is the top of my part, and that's very important. So I need to make sure it goes back the other way, which is this arrow right here. This is out of the board. This is into the board. I can see my sketch. It's going down. Now, if you look at your requirements of the soap dish before I finish this extrusion, you look at the requirements, you'll see that there's something called a draft angle. A draft angle is an angle that the part is going to be, and the reason you put a draft angle on a part is so that when you pull it out of the mold, it doesn't get stuck. If we, if we, this part is going, it would be made in what's called an injection molding machine. There would be a mold made that you would, that the machine would put plastic into the mold, and then it would cool inside the mold a little bit, and then the mold would open and eject the part. So this outside face needs to have a draft angle that goes that's skinnier on the top and fatter on the bottom. So the outs the 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 wall of this of this soap dish is going to go down from the top down in a in a shape of like a trapezoid. So the bottom will be if I were to measure the very bottom edge here to here it would be more than the top edge from here to here. We do that with a draft angle. How do we put in a draft angle? Well, up here on the extrude box, we see it says more next to the word shape. So I'm going to select more. And down here, there's something called taper. Taper means going from, you're going from one size to a smaller size or a larger size, and it wants an angle. And this is how we put our draft angle in. So we're going to put a five degree taper. Now, notice, did you see what it did there? I'm going to do it again. I'll put a zero. Now watch closely what happens to the wall here. I'm going to put a zero in here. Okay, now watch what watch the direction it goes when I put a five. Okay, it expanded the bottom out. That is the correct dimension. That's the way that I want it to go. You can also see that it's showing us that the angle is going from a straight line here, which would be straight down, out. So this is the proper direction. We want to go back to our shape and make sure it's one inch, which is the required thickness of our soap dish, and we're going to say OK. Now, what happened to our sketch? Well, the sketch is consumed by the extrusion, even though uh, now we did select both of those parts, but even if I only selected one of them, my extrusion, my sketch would still be consumed and would disappear. We need to put a cavity into the top of this soap dish for the soap, but I need my sketch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the word extrusion here, and I'm gonna hit the plus sign. This browser bar, remember, shows you every step, every command that you've made, every step, every, every feature that you've put onto your part shows up here on the browser bar. And under the extrusion shows the sketch. And if I put my cursor over this word sketch one, we can see that the sketch is there. In order to use it to make more extrusions, I need to right-click it, and I need to make it either visible, but even a better way to do it is what's called Share Sketch. I will share the sketch, 
And now I'm able to come back to it and do the extrusions that I need to to finish up my soap dish, at least the first part of it. So what I want to do is I want to put a hole here where my soap cavity is going to be by doing an extrusion. So I want to select that area. I'm only concerned about this area now. But you'll see that when I select it, it's trying to add material. Okay, this, this area right here is the Add Material button. If I want to cut material or subtract material, I need to use the second option, which is right here. And now you'll see because the program knows that I'm, I'm subtracting material, it changes it so that it's taking material away from the material that's there and it's showing the right direction. Before I say okay to this, I've got to fix a couple of things. First of all, the I'm going to say okay to this this uh, rotation. You notice I rotated the part so I can see I can see down through it. This is not what I want. I don't want the cavity going all the way through the soap dish. I only want it and if you look at the specifications of the design brief, it's only 0.65 deep. So the the cut that I'm making in the material is going to be 0.65, okay? Now, the other thing I need to do is I need a draft angle on this as well because in order to make that cavity, there's going to be some kind of a solid protrusion going into the mold that will make that cavity. So the plastic will go in, it'll surround the outside, and there'll be some kind of a positive piece coming down into the mold that the plastic would shape around to make this cavity. Well, at some point, I'd have to pull that mold apart, and that piece would have to come out. If these walls were straight, it would stick and deform the plastic. So we need a draft angle. But look at this. Notice, if I put a 5 here like I did before, now, what did it do? It went out. It went out toward in the same direction as the outside. Well, Imagine having a solid piece that comes in here. Am I going to be able to pull that piece out once the plastic solidifies? No, I wouldn't. It would get stuck. So this taper angle on the inside needs to be a negative 5, and you can see that it's going in the opposite direction, a negative 5-degree taper angle, 0.65 deep. And now you can see that I've got my basic shape, and I have my cavity where my soap's going to go. Now, I don't like looking at this sketch, so all I have to do is come back to my sketch and turn off the visibility. This is the visibility. I can turn it off, and now I've got the basic shape of my soap dish. Okay, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to handle symmetrical parts because some of you may have a soap dish that is symmetrical. In other words, it, it's, it has the same thing on one side as it does another, and I'm going to teach you a feature called mirror in the next tutorial.